for our morning prayer this morning. Um, I'd just like to introduce uh, Caroline Bruce here, who has the grand title of parish consultant um, uh, from the diocese. And Caroline is here today to facilitate the discussion that we're going to have in the, in the sermon slot of, of the service about um, where we're going as a parish in preparation for the recruitment um, of a new rector. So when we come to that, there'll be a bit more detail before we, uh, you know, before we go ahead with the discussion. Um, but um, welcome, Caroline. It's good to see you. Just one other point. Um, the month's ma this month's magazine, catch this, for the distributors that are here, the copies are at the back of the church for you to pick up and, uh, and deliver. And um, I don't need to introduce Joe, but uh, I'll hand over to Joe, who's leading our service today. So, Joe. Thank you, Malcolm. So let's, as we begin our service of worship today, if we just take a few moments to recognize that God has invited us to be here this morning in his presence and to worship him in the power of his spirit. So now if we are able, we are allowed to stand and hum our first hymn, uh, which I think you've got a, a hymn book is number 743, O God Beyond All Praising. So my first job is to light a candle, which we're lighting each service during the, the uh, interregnum, to remind us of, of, the, of that fact and to pray for God's guidance in all that we do in looking for the right person to come and serve us, serve Christ with us here in our benefice. And there is a special prayer I'm supposed to say at this point but I haven't got a copy, so I'm just gonna make it up on the hoof, okay? <laughs> Dear Lord, we thank you that you are guiding us in all we do, and we pray that you would lead 
your church here in Axbridge and Shipham and Roborough and bring the right person to come and help to lead us in your service and worship. We ask this in your name. Amen. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may give ourselves to the service of God. So in seeking the forgiveness of our sins, let us now sit or kneel to remember those things which we need to confess to our Holy Lord. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We pray together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. So we, if I would invite you to, to stand again if you feel comfortable doing that, uh, because we are going to uh, join together in the song of joy, a hymn of praise. A hymn we can at least say, even if we can't sing any. So let us join together in, on page four, the Jubilati. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless him. For the Lord is gracious. His steadfast love is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So if you'd like to be seated, I think Bob is going to come and read our first lesson for today. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. You excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you. So we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I'm testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others. For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty, you might become rich. 
and in this matter I'm giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need. In order that there may be a fair balance, as it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. This is the word of the Lord. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the lake. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, named Jairus, came and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had. And she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately, her hemorrhage stopped and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him, and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went into where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha, kum, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. 
Um, I'm not preaching this morning, so I'm going to take 30 seconds. I can't leave that wonderful gospel there without saying something about it. Uh, and I think that uh, uh, it has a real relevance to what we're thinking about today. So we've got two people, two stories going on together in that gospel, haven't we? The story of the woman uh, with the hemorrhage. And we, I think we, we probably know, but it's good to bring to mind again how much that would have affected that woman's life. She wouldn't have been able to be part of society, be part of a, um, uh, the temple. She would have been shunned. She was literally excluded from everything because of her condition. Her life was effectively over. And then we get Jairus' daughter, whose life is actually over. And Jesus comes and he brings them both back to a full life, a new life. And uh, as we're looking forward to that new life of our, of our church, I think uh, we can take heart from that. And I was trying to think how this links into the next part of our service. And actually it does very beautifully as well, because we're going to say together in a moment, uh, the Benedictus, which is the, um, uh, the song of, uh, of Zachariah, which he says as he's bringing John, he and Elizabeth bring John into the temple to be circumcised. And if you remember, he's been mute uh, for many months and then he is able to speak. And he's celebrating again that new life, that miraculous new life for a barren woman in, in the person of John. So as we sit, let's say together that wonderful song that he, that he presumably sang. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So if you'd like to remain uh, seated or kneeling as Malcolm leads us uh, in our intercessions, which have been deliberately brought forward in our service today to allow us to pray for the, the discussions that we're going to be having later. Malcolm. Heavenly Father, we meet in your name. We know you are with us, but help us to discern your voice and feel your presence near. We give thanks for those leading our service today, for Andy, for Mike, and making it possible for others to join us, and for Joe leading our worship here, and for Caroline, who will guide our discussions today as we seek to discern the future vision for your church here in Axbridge and in our benefice. Lord, in your mercy. Father God, we bring before you all the people sitting beside us now 
and those joining us on Zoom, people we know and people whose names you know and whose lives you care about, people to be cared and prayed for as fellow members of your family. Empower each one of us to use the gifts you've given us. Help us to ensure that our worship is powerful and our welcome is always warm. Guide us to a vision of the life you intend us to lead, that by your Holy Spirit, we will be uni united in common purpose to accomplish this mission. We turn to you to guide us in this time of transition. We need your wisdom that we may be receptive to change and growth in our discussions today. Enable us to share our thoughts openly and honestly, but respecting the opinion of others. We pray for all those most directly involved in working to find a new priest for your people here, that together we may discover your way for the future and to see your kingdom grow. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the worldwide church, for your church, which is our church, wherever people meet to worship you. We pray for Ken and all the members of our ministry team, for Joe, for Pam and for Peter in their increased workload, for our wardens, for our PCCs, and for all those working to serve you in the churches of our benefice. Lord, in your mercy. We look to the wider world, beyond our own shores, to the reality of conflict and human suffering. We pray for wise and sober counsels, for moderation, for mediation, for peacemakers, for all men and women of goodwill, particularly today for the new leadership in Israel and Iran. And we pray too for the suffering people of Afghanistan, left once again to the repression of the Taliban. We pray for all the ordinary people who are caught up helpless and suffering in the face of decisions and actions made by their leaders. And in this peaceful church, we pray for all who are in danger and distress today. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the sick and suffering people, wherever they may be, remembering especially those named in, in touch. And in a few moments of silence, we bring before you others known to us who need your loving hand on them today. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the many who are missing or dead following the collapse of the apartment block in Miami and for their families and friends. And here we pray for the souls of those who've recently died, especially remembering George Bailey, Roger Hughes and Graham Nicholson. We commend them to your eternal arms and ask for your comfort on their families and for all those who mourn today. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, 
the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And I, I invite you to, to be seated as we uh, join in the hymn, and I've lost the... It is number 124. From the deep places, hear my cry. to share in praying of the collect for today. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this heavenly Father for your, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we pray as Jesus taught us, together we say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And in conclusion of our service today, I invite you to stand uh, where you are and we will share the grace together. And if we feel comfortable saying it with our eyes open to each other as the body of Christ here today. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for all your contributions today and go in the peace of the Lord. Amen. <laughs>